Hi, your friends. Prepared Suburbanite back at you. Um, I got a comment on a on a recent video from uh, a guy named Robert Boyce, uh, eleven seventy five, and he says, um, "It seems to me that you, being older than most of the other presenters on YouTube, uh, you could address prepping, bugging out, bugging in, different requirements, etc., for seniors." And from that point of view, what we can do as seniors being the elders in the bunch. And, you know, I thought that's a terrific comment. And um, I think because I do um, uh, identify as a senior that I thought I'd uh, follow uh, Robert Boyce's suggestion and do a little bit of research to uh, see what I could turn up about the right kind of uh, preps, the right kind of readiness, and things that we need to take into consideration when we are seniors and we are serious about being prepared for whatever's coming, any disaster, um, economic, um, natural disaster, uh, World War III, whatever. But um, I, I did come up with quite a few really good ideas, so stick around. For those of us that do uh, identify as being seniors, um, that means that we grew up in the 40s and the 50s and uh, some of us even in the 60s, and if we could survive that, um, things that we did uh, as youngsters growing up in uh, um, our youth, uh, if we can survive that, we can survive pretty much anything. But consider this, we, uh, <laughs> we drank out of garden hoses, we rode bicycles without helmets and um, without elbow and knee pads. We swam in the local streams without floaties. And then, um, let's see, boys took shop class where we learned plumbing, soldering, woodworking, printing, mechanical repair, auto repair, that kind of a thing. And uh, girls took home ec and learned cooking, uh, meal prep, sewing, budgeting, family finance, uh, those kinds of things. Well, um, it really did boil down to, and I really think that um, shop class and home economics as we knew it back in the day was really a, a, a great way to go. It, it prepared um, the folks that took those classes for the future um, in whatever vocation they decided they wanted to uh, get involved in. And it was able to take um, practical applications, the things that we learned in school, uh, like arithmetic and mathematics and um, English and comp reading comprehension and things like that, and um, allowed us to use that kind of data in problem-solving mode in preparation for the future. And I thought it was a terrific idea. So, but we survived the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and here we are on the precipice of whatever's coming down the road, and my God, um, all you got to do is uh, uh, flip through YouTube here and there, uh, any of the prepper channels, and boy, there sure is an awful lot of doom and gloom. Um, China invasions of Taiwan, China building... Um, uh, military bases on Cuba so that they can spy on us and uh, be ready for a f first strike attack uh, from from a hundred miles away. Um, the stuff that's going on in North Korea, the uh, uh, proxy war that we're fighting in Ukraine right now, uh, you name it, all those things uh, uh, beyond beyond what's going on politically, beyond what's going on economically in the country right now with inflation and the crazy stock market and uh, you name it. Um, I think <clears throat> as seniors, we've got 
a true responsibility not only to ourselves but to our families to be absolutely prepared. So I did a little bit of research here and there, just trying to get gather up uh, some ideas, uh, trying to get perspectives from different folks on uh, what we did. I looked at uh, uh, the, the Centers for Disease Control website. I looked at the Red Cross website. Um, I looked at uh, the Homeland Security's website and a few other prepping channels that happened to pop up. But it was very interesting when I, when I uh, put in um, prepping for um, elderly, um, preparations for elderly, that kind of thing. The first three or four pop-ups that I got were ads for nursing homes. Well, that's about the last thing I want to do, but it does play a role for some folks. So here's uh, kind of it in a category uh, perspective. Um, we need to be ready medically. Well, medically, that means that you need to know what's going on with your body. You need to know what prescriptions you're taking. You need to know um, what the dosages are, uh, the frequency of them, and how much you got on hand and where you can get your next batch. It's, it's darn near impossible to accumulate um, a year or two's worth of um, <clears throat> prescription medications because your doctor has to prescribe them. It's got to go through the drugstore. They're going to want insurance information or you're going to end up paying the highest price for it. Um, it it's really, really difficult to get more than maybe a 90 or 100 day supply of whatever um, uh, prescription medication you're taking. But there's some interesting uh, statistics with respect to prescription medications that I thought I would um, share with you if I can find that here. All right, here's, uh, yeah. The use of one or more prescription drugs in the past 30 days by age in the United States. So they've got it broken down. You'll see here, I'll put uh, the graph up here. Um, you'll see there that uh, it's broken down all ages 0 to 11, 12 to 19, 20 to 59, and 60 over. And it appears that about 85% of the people over 60 have used prescription drugs within the last 30 days. That's pretty much the majority there. And what are they? Well, according to the uh, CDC, there are uh, lipid lowering drugs for high cholesterol, anti-diabetic agents, obviously if you've got type 2 diabetes, um, you're going to be taking Medications for that is a general rule. Beta blockers for um, high blood pressure, ACE inhibitors for high blood pressure, um, proton pump inhibitors for um, reflux and stomach acid kind of issues. So those are the kinds of common things that we're uh, uh, seeing uh, the, uh, nationwide for what the um, prescriptions that we're using. What, most interesting, I think, is that um, folks that are over 60 that use five or more prescription drugs in the past 30 days, okay, that means that, let's see, 34.5% of the U.S. population that's over 60, 60 to 79 is how they qualified it, um, are doing five or more. Well, I just counted uh, what I'm doing. Um, I've got um, a couple of things for, uh, uh, one for high blood pressure, one for high cholesterol. Um, I do have uh, type 2 diabetes and I'm taking, taking a drug for that. So I'm doing three... Yeah, three scripts, prescriptions 
um, on a regular basis. So it's not quite five, but it's three for sure. And um, I will say that uh, knowing what you've got, taking a personal inventory of um, your medical needs, your prescriptions, making sure that you know what prescriptions are, what the dosages are, where you're going to get them in the future, um, that kind of stuff. I think it makes, um, it's going to make a big difference in overall preparedness in a situation where um, there's a disaster. Now, we'll get into the next uh, couple of things. and uh, uh, We'll talk about mental and um, uh, as you get older, your mental faculties aren't quite as sharp as they were when you were uh, 20 or 25 years old, and that's for sure. You get to be a little bit more forgetful. <laughs> You've got an awful lot of uh, knowledge crammed into your brain about uh, uh, what, you, what you've been doing, what your career is, what's going on in your life and all that, and that causes, I think, you to forget uh, some things that may or may not be either trivial or very important. But working on your uh, uh, mental capacity, keeping it uh, keeping sharp, I think is uh, um, a, a really good thing to do. I can remember my mother-in-law at um, 80, 80 plus years old was doing New York Times crossword puzzles every day and she'd finish them in half an hour to 45 minutes. She was, um, she was a terror when it comes to um, crossword puzzles and she was very, very good at it. It kept her mind sharp. She read a lot. So I, I would suggest that those kind of mental exercises, um, doing crossword puzzles, reading, um, will help to keep your mental faculties at least sharpened up a little bit. Um, your spiritual, I'm going to leave that up to you, but if uh, uh, reading is something that you might consider for um, uh, improving mental sharpness and uh, memory retention and things like that, you may want to consider reading some verses in the Bible. I uh, found it helpful uh, myself. So physical, yep, um, kind of ties in with the medical, but uh, the physical is very important as well. Are you getting the right kind of exercise for you? Is your weight under control? Um, do you know your levels of endurance and what limits you may have? How far can you really walk? How many steps can you walk up? Um, not too long ago, I was invited to attend a, um, a football game uh, here at uh, NC State, and the, the seats that my buddy had for us were way up on the um, about the fourth or fifth level from the top, top row. And walking up um, that very steep incline in, that, in the bowl at uh, NC State football, was uh, quite a chore. Um, it, it tested, it, it was kind of like a stress test for me. And uh, I said, boy, I'm, I need to take better care of that because I really hadn't been doing the right kind of exercises. So I do try to walk frequently. I do try to stay very active. Um, I do try to work on strength exercises because um, I've noticed as I get older, um, a, a little bit of vertigo steps into it, not quite as agile as I used to be. Uh, things like climbing ladders and stuff like that, I've pretty much left that to the younger folks uh, from now on. So that's the physical. Take a good self-assessment of your physical capacities and try to work on it where you can and uh, work on it to the degree that you are able to. Then it gets down to, okay, so there's a natural disaster, there's an economic catastrophe, there's a, a hurricane, a this or that, volcanoes, I, you name it, an invasion by a foreign adversary. Um, all kinds of crazy things can happen, and I'm not suggesting that you have to plan for 
one of them, but I think you should plan for disaster preparedness, whatever form it takes. So you got to make a plan. And is your plan, um, does it consider bugging in, staying at home? Does it consider bugging out if you have to? Now, me personally, I'm staying right here. But if this neighborhood gets leveled because uh, the volcano erupted in my backyard and wiped us all out um, and I'm still alive, I'm probably in that bug outline somewhere and I'm looking for a place to go. Well, thankfully, I have a plan for that, which um, is our personal plan and what's going to happen in that horrible eventuality that our house burns down, um, that it's destroyed in some fashion, uh, or flooded out, which probably will never happen, but um, I do have a bug out plan. But my primary goal is to stay bug in. And you've got to consider all that kind of stuff. And to be, to be prepared to be bugged in and uh, for an extended period of time, whether it's a week, two weeks, two months, um, a year, year and a half, who knows how long it's going to be. Food supplies, enough to feed you and your family for at least six months. More prevalently, a year to have all that stuff right available. Your water, water purification, uh, refilling water stations, uh, ca capture on rainwater, no matter what you can do, water is a true source of survival. Uh, so don't discount water. Generators. Um, if you're going to be bugged in, chances are electricity is going to be at best intermittent, at worst non-existent. So you need to be able to power things. I would suggest investing in a solar generator, a fair-sized one, uh, 2,000 watt. I've got a couple of 1,300 watts. I got a small one that's uh, my basically UPS backup for my computers. And uh, that seems to uh, um, get me going as far as the solar generators go. I've got two portable um, gas-driven generators that I can uh, fire up. Uh, I do it about every three months or so, just fire them up, let them warm up, and all that kind of stuff. So I've got two of those, and we've got a full house um, generator that's uh, powered by natural gas hookup here. And thankfully, we don't have to ever really use that. It's only been in use, I think, for maybe four or five hours in the last uh, eh, five years or so. Uh, once the uh, utility company around here decided to bury uh, underground um, all the cables and all the wires, um, we haven't really seen much of a blackout kind of a situation. Well, my battery in my camera um, just uh, died, so I had to replace that, which is also a good reminder to make sure that you've got batteries and battery backup for uh, things that you need, like your emergency radio, uh, flashlights, uh, that kind of stuff. So just make sure you've got the right kind of battery backup uh, system in place for yourself. So um, if you're going to be bugging out, and you do have to bug out, and I suggest that you always have ready to go a bug out bag that's got what you need, that's going to include those kind of medical necessities that you uh, uh, determined in the first step of this. Uh, what are you going to need? Uh, if, if, if you got medications in there, uh, if you need a, an oxygen tank, uh, do you have that ready to go as part of your uh, bug out operation? Basic supplies, um, non-perishable foods, uh, a couple of bottles of water, that kind of a thing, a change of clothes, uh, first aid kit, hygiene items, uh, soap, uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, personal documents. Um, I, I've 
taken all my documents that are personal, the, the deed, the driver's license, all that kind of stuff, and put it on a flash drive. And the flash drive is part of our uh, bug out bags. One thing that I learned during this uh, realm of uh, this round of research um, is an ID band that you may want to uh, somehow affix an ID band to yourself with your name, uh, your contact information, your next of kin, that kind of stuff on there, just in case anything happens and you're found unconscious alongside the road, they may know who you are because you uh, took the time to uh, affix uh, an ID bracelet to your wrist. So it's a thought. You can if you want, you don't have to. So <coughs> if you've got your ready bags going, and you got one that's uh, dedicated to uh, um, getting you out of there in case you've got to go somewhere and you have to be evacuated and you've got that ready to go. You can grab it, toss it in the vehicle and uh, strap it on your back. I, I use a regular backpack kind of a thing and that's uh, whatever. So um, if you uh, um, want to, I, I would suggest that you pack a special one for um, a get out and a special one for a get home. So two different kinds of scenarios are going on and some folks are even advocating an inch bag. An inch is I'm never coming home. Um, that's like your permanent bug out kind of a thing. Um, Maybe kind of tough but um, something to be considered. I'm not going to do it myself but um, I'm going to stick with uh, um, get home bags and bug out bags. So one of the things that uh, um, is frequently discussed when we're talking um, senior people in a uh, disaster type situation and a bug out situation and a evacuation kind of a thing is what do you do for personal protection, personal defense, self-defense? Some folks um, are adept at uh, using a handgun. Some folks are adept at um, nunchucks, you know, the, those things that do all that. Um, some folks um, don't think that that's even a good idea. But having a some form of self-defense, self-protection, um, readily available to you in your bug out bag. If you're a woman, maybe in your purse. If you're a guy, uh, uh, in your pockets even. Um, bear spray, mace, that kind of stuff. I think it it's going to at least slow things down um, and, and give you a chance to get to safe ground. I would be carrying um, I would be carrying my handgun, and I'm sure my wife would be also. So that's that would be my preferred method. But I'm still physically able to rack the slide, um, throw the bolt, do all that. Um, certain folks that, as you get older, you, you start losing dexterity, you start losing strength in your fingers and in your hands and in your arms, um, and it's, it could get very tough if you've got um, a slide rack on your handgun uh, to try to rack the slide on that if your hands are arthritic or whatever. So be, as part of your self-assessment, take a look at that. You may need to switch the style of your handgun. You may want to go with, uh, with a revolver uh, instead so you don't have to rack a slide. All you got to do is pop the cylinders and um, there you go. So some kind of considerations there. <coughs> One of the other considerations I think is uh, mutual assistance groups. It's tough when you get to be um, over 70, over 65, over 60, um, in your 70s, in your 80s, to really deal with uh, mutual assistance groups. The ones that I've encountered, the ones that I've uh, investigated around here, um, pretty much they're all young folks and they're all involved in um, ham radio, which is fine. 
they seem to be uh, very involved in um, bushcraft skills, uh, wilderness survival skills, that kind of stuff. Well, I've uh, passed that point in my life. I don't have to prove to myself or anybody else um, that I can build a fire in the woods and um, that I can make a snare trap and all those kinds of things. Um, I just don't think that that's the kind of mutual assistance group that a 70, 75, 80 year old person really needs. Now, the experience and skill set that um, uh, a 75 or 80 year old person can bring to a mutual assistance group uh, can be quite a marketable skill if, uh, if you've got a few of those kinds of things. It's been said that the uh, mature folks, those that identify as being seniors, um, have much more patience, that, they're, um, that they can do like, uh, the rounds of guard duty and uh, some of the more boring tasks around a uh, um, SHTF kind of a situation, that they're much more adept at dealing with that than uh, a high-strung 18-year-old kid. But can that kid run faster? Yeah, I'll bet he can. So those are some of the kinds of, of situations there. There is some kind of other side um, advice out there. And it's, it's uh, I'm not sure I always agree with these kinds of things, but one of the things that I did see today when I was researching this was um, don't prep for barter items. Bartering can be dangerous for a senior. You may expose your preps to a perpetrator that would be uh, looking at you, sizing you up, saying, hey, he's a 75-year-old guy. Um, I can take him out and look at all the food he's got there. Yeah, so... One of the suggestions is be very careful about what you're, how you barter and what you're bartering and uh, how you uh, do those kinds of transactions. And the other thing is, is truly, and I think I mentioned this a little bit ago, um, be very cognizant of your own limitations. Uh, one of the big prepper mantras is, you know, wilderness survival training, bushcraft training. Um, just make sure that you've got the physical capacity to really do it and do it well, to uh, parlay and uh, enjoy those kinds of skills. So I think that kind of categorizes some of the considerations that senior people uh, like me, that I identify as being a senior, that, um, that you have to kind of take into consideration as you plan for whatever nastiness is going to happen. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always, and I'll see you real soon.